Hello, I'm Sula, and this is day five of Eight Day Astronomer, an eight day course in which I'm going to teach you how to become a backyard astronomer. In the last episode, I told you to find an area with a clear view of the sky, and I gave you some resources in order to find dark sky sites because one thing that's vital to seeing many things in the night sky is having access to our disappearing dark skies. It's true that you can see many things from your own backyard, even if it's light polluted, if you live in an urban area, or even if you live in a heavily light polluted city, you can always see the moon when the moon is out, and you can see the planets when they're visible because those objects are very bright and they don't require dark skies. But if you want to see things other than the moon and the planets, such as a lot of stars, the Milky Way, galaxies, nebulae, and other deep sky objects, you'll need to find a dark sky site. And sadly, it's getting harder and harder to find dark skies. When I was young, I was lucky that we could just walk out the front door into the yard at night and we could see the Milky Way on summer evenings and lots of lots of stars. But those days are long gone and the modern amateur astronomer must find a dark sky site because of growing light pollution. Most beginners in amateur astronomy, from my experience, fail to adequately consider the devastating effects of light pollution on our wonderful hobby. I try to emphasize to beginners that what they'll see in the night sky is predominantly affected by the amount of light pollution where they intend to observe. But it seems like some people don't want to hear about it. They don't want to hear what I'm saying about light pollution or maybe it's just that it's very inconvenient in today's modern world to seek out dark sky sites in order to dramatically improve what you can see in the night sky. Because the simple truth is that you just can't see as much in a light polluted area when you're observing the night sky. And you can't just buy a bigger telescope and expect that to solve the problem because it won't. You just are not going to see as much from a light polluted area. I realize it's a big commitment to pack up your telescope or other equipment and other things you need and drive a long way perhaps to reach a dark sky site, especially when you have a demanding job. I myself gave up when I became self-employed and I gave away my eight inch Dobsonian, but I never gave up on astronomy entirely or gave up on going to dark sky sites, I always made the time to go find a dark sky area for meteor showers and I'd watch lunar eclipses and other celestial phenomena. I would plan camping trips to dark sky sites and even in the busiest times of my work in life, I made the time to go to a dark sky site and you should too. Let me explain what light pollution is. And don't let me hear you call the moon light pollution, it's not. Light pollution is the human-made outdoor lighting that exceeds lighting levels from those occurring naturally. Light pollution disrupts wildlife, it impacts human health, it wastes money, it wastes energy, it contributes to climate change, and most importantly for us amateur astronomers, it blocks our view of the universe. According to multiple studies, over 80% of the world's population is affected by light pollution. And what that means is that most people in the world live under light polluted skies, significantly impacting their view of the night sky. According to Scientific American, researchers have found that we are losing our view of the sky at an astonishing rate of almost 10% per year. That is a horrifying rate. But there are some things that you can do about it. You can turn off your own outdoor lights. 
as I've advocated in many episodes, I personally do not believe in outdoor lighting and I don't understand why people move to a rural area or live in a rural area and then put up blindingly bright lights. I just don't understand it. At the moment, simple awareness is one of our greatest tools in fighting light pollution. Turning off your own outdoor lighting at night might not seem like a big deal, but if you tell other people, that helps awareness to grow. Any cause like this needs a critical mass to get widespread notice so everyone who participates can add to the solution. So turn off your own unnecessary outdoor lights and invite your neighbors over to look at the night sky or look through a telescope so that they can see how that annoying outdoor light negatively impacts what you all can see through a telescope or of the night sky. And maybe get that neighbor thinking about why maybe turning off the offensive light at night could be a great idea. Or maybe make specific suggestions to your neighbor that using targeted lighting rather than a floodlight or pointing the light down rather than to the sky or deploying outdoor lighting only when needed, such as using motion sensors and opting for light bulbs and LEDs that use red rather than blue lights can reduce how much light scatters across the night sky will be a small but significant contribution to the solution to reducing light pollution. The rewards are great. The night sky is quite simply gorgeous with treasures scattered among the stars, going out under that velvet vault and watching a meteor shower or a lunar eclipse is a wonderful way to spend time with family and friends or just contemplate the universe that we live in. To see the stars is to nourish the soul. I've seen and heard countless owls and coyotes and elk and even moose while outside at night stargazing and observing the heavens. It gives me a profound appreciation of the natural world around me. The awe of the night sky is very real. I myself have a childlike wonder for the mysteries of the universe that gives me an absolute joy. It gives me surprise and elation at seeing something that's so incredibly far away and so beautiful and so different from what we see here on Earth. It's so unusual and amazing that we can see it at all. But because of the pervasiveness of light pollution in our modern world, it's not going away despite our best efforts and yes, you can view from a light polluted area, but it's just not the same as going to a truly dark sky site and seeing the universe in all its glory. So that's why I encourage all of you to fight light pollution and for you to encourage your neighbors to turn off unnecessary lights at night and also write your local politicians and encourage them to adopt dark sky practices recommended by Dark Sky International. But since it's unlikely to get better anytime soon, I encourage you to take the time to visit a truly dark sky site. It's de rigueur for any serious amateur astronomer. You simply must take the time and make it happen. Visit a dark sky site. You'll be glad you did. When you take the time to go outside and look up at the night sky from a truly dark sky site, you never know what you might see. It's salubrious. So light pollution is destructive, it's terrible, it's growing, and I encourage all of you to turn off any unnecessary lights in your own home and encourage your neighbors to do likewise and write your local city council and other politicians and bring this growing problem to their attention. 
but realistically, it's not going away. And so you simply must take the time to find a dark sky site and go visit them as often as you can and consider contributing to Dark Sky International. I'll see you in the next episode. Dark Skies Forever. Sula. Signing off.